Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are moving on to our providers section. So we already covered AWS, but let's go take a look at some uh, different ones because I just want you to get a bit of familiarity with something else. So you understand that uh, there are different challenges with each one and how the providers are a little bit different. So let's take a look at Azure first, and you're gonna need the Azure CLI installed. So if you do not have that already, go to Azure CLI and get that installed. Um, it's going to vary based on your requirements. The other thing is you have to have an Azure account. So I'm just going to go to my portal here uh, to my uh, sandbox. I guess I haven't logged in in a while. So I'm just going to have to open up that for Azure. Hopefully they don't make it too hard on me here. There we go, and I'm in my Azure portal. So what I'm going to do here, and if I'm still running ML Studio, I really gotta shut that down. Uh, it doesn't look like I am, so that's totally fine. Okay, so anyway, um, coming back to uh, Azure, what we wanna do is make sure you're on the registry, go to providers, go to Azure, and we're gonna grab the information to configure this. And I have a new folder here called providers Azure. So just make a main.tf in that. We're gonna paste the contents there and just make sure you're in the correct directory. So uh, make sure you're seeded into that. And I know, uh, cause I've done this before, I know that uh, we need to um, specify features empty in here. Cannot tell you why, I just know that you have to, um, but there are a lot of different methods for authenticating with Azure. Some very easy, some very difficult. Uh, we can use the CLI when we're working in local mode, when it comes to uh, using Terraform Cloud, the remote version, it's a lot harder. We have a lot uh, a lot more options, but we're gonna take the easy route here and use the uh, CLI. And this is gonna be reliant on us doing the Azure login, okay? So um, we have the provider, um, I'm not sure why the provider name's not there. I didn't delete it out. I believe it's Azure RM. So we'll just go back here and make sure that is correct. So I'm just gonna click, um, up here at Azure Azure RM, okay? And if we scroll on down, I think it even shows you, yeah, you have to have it like that, okay? So um, we'll do that and I'll just type in Terraform init. And it doesn't like something. I don't know what happened to the names. We'll just copy it again, no biggie. Somehow I must have replaced it by accident. And we'll do features here. And we'll do Terraform init. And one of the easiest things that we can create in Terraform is probably a resource group. If you're not familiar with resource groups, they're just kind of like a folder for your resources. So I'm gonna go here and make a new one. It's just a resource, so I believe it's Azure uh, RM underscore resource group. As you can see, I've done this a few times, and I'm just gonna say, you know, my resource group, or I will just say um, providers, Azure providers, Terraform, Azure providers, sure, why not? And we will give that a name. Okay, and we'll have to give it a location. I'm gonna do uh, East US. All right, and so that says that has been successfully initialized. And so um, I can do Terraform plan. This is not gonna work until I do a login, but I just wanna see what it prompts us with if we attempt to uh, provision this without any credentials in place. Actually, to be fair, I've probably done it before, so I'm actually just going to um, run it because I think it'll just actually work for me because I might be I might already have credentials. But uh, what you'd want to do is just do AZ login. So I'll type in AZ login, and that's going to authenticate my machine to Azure. So see how it opened up my browser. I'm going to log in. It says you are now logged in. You can close this. Great. I'm going to close that, and if we go back. Um, you know, we have established a connection there. So it doesn't look like there's any error. Yep, okay, we're all good. So now if I was to do a plan, 
I don't think it would really throw an error until we do an apply. Let's see if this will work. While it's going, we'll just navigate over to resource groups. As you can see, I have a bunch of junk uh, resource groups here that I'm not even using. At some point I should clean that up. And it says, we're gonna create this resource group. Sounds good to me. So I'm gonna type Terraform apply and just see if that works. It's a bit nice not having to handle any AWS credentials, you know, like passing those along with the CLI. Though of course, once you get into these other ones, it becomes a lot more difficult. Um, every time I have to set this up, I have to really uh, read through this. It's like a lot of work. Um, but I imagine if you're working in Azure every day, it's not a big deal. But basically, you're just going to be setting a bunch of these in Terraform Cloud, okay? So you'd have to get your subscription ID, tenant ID, client ID. Um, and it's going to vary based on a few different uh, scenarios there. So, But anyway, what we'll do is make our way back over here. And it says, do you want to perform these actions? We are going to say yes. And it says it has created that resource. So if we make our way over to Azure um, and we give this a refresh, sometimes their console is not always up to date like SAWS is. So it could be not showing up here and actually exist. And so I don't see it yet. And that's Terraform for you. So I believe that it does exist, that it is there because it says here that it has created this here but yeah the um the azure portal is just like that it just takes time to update so i would just say let's assume that we did create it correctly because it did say that it made it and we'll wait for the cache to bu uh, bust or whatever it has to do to make this show up here i mean it's also possible it could have ended up in a different um uh tenant or or that but i don't think so because this is my main one so let's give this another refresh there it is see yeah so you just have to wait again terraform or sorry, uh, Azure's portal is a lot slower than AWS, but it also does a lot more. So I guess that's kind of a trade-off there. Anyway, so now that we have a resource group, probably be a great idea to set up a server. I'm going to tell you right now, setting up a virtual machine in Azure is extremely painful. Um, I think that if we wanted to go take a, an example and see like um, Azure virtual machine tutorial for Terraform, HashiCorp has one here and actually no this is actually just on microsoft but look at all the stuff just to set up a single virtual machine like you have your resource group your virtual network your subnet your public ip your network groups your network interface like just tons and tons and tons of stuff so i don't do it this way what i do is i go to the modules um because that's the easiest way to set it up for um azure so we'll say, oops, we'll go registry. And if we go to modules and we go to Azure, there's one for compute. Maybe we just type in compute up here. Azure compute. And this is like way, way, way easier. So we have a Linux server, a Windows server, things like that. Um, we are going to need, we have a resource group, but we are going to need our Linux server. Because I do not want to spin up a Windows machine. Just because, uh, you know, like Linux is just very inexpensive. That's the reason why. It's not because I have an issue with Windows. I'm working on a Windows machine right now. Uh, we'll go ahead and copy the network in because that is just something we have to have. And it might be nice to have the output of the, the name of the server. Sure. So we'll do that. And we might need to modify this so that it makes sense because I named my resource group that. So this one is just called example there. So I might just have to swap that out like that. And I really should have just named it example. I would have saved myself a whole lot of trouble, but I did not know <laughs> I would have saved time if I did that. So we'll just scroll on up here. And I think that is okay. It's not specifying what size a server it is. And that is something that is very important to me because I want it to be inexpensive. So I, I know what we have to set. It's called VM size. And a very inexpensive one is standard uh, B21S. 
Okay, I remember that from my uh, Azure days, making the Azure courses. And that will be uh, very inexpensive and we're not gonna keep it around for very long, so it's not a big deal. And I think that this is correct. I'm just gonna double check. Uh, this looks all fine to me. So what we'll do is go ahead and see if this will provision. So we'll do Terraform uh, apply. Actually, we'll have to do Terraform init because we've installed a new module. Okay, and so we can now do Terraform apply and we'll just review it, make sure that everything is okay and it's happy with it. But yeah, I would say that um, Azure is the hardest thing to use with Terraform. And that's not Terraform's fault, that's just the complexity of Azure. Um, but, you know, again, that's a trade-off, you know, Azure can do a lot of things, so you just have to decide what you want. Okay, so we will type yes, there's way too much to review there, and I'm just gonna hope that this succeeds. And what we'll do is we'll go back to the top here, and I'm just gonna go over to my virtual machines. And we'll refresh here, so we don't see anything yet. Okay, and that is creating. This is gonna take a little bit of time, so I'll see you back here in a moment, okay? All right, so it looks like I might've made a spelling mistake or a, a minor tweak here. So it's saying that uh, B, B21S is not valid. So what I'm gonna do, just to find out what sizes there are and get the right name, I think we can find it this way here. And if I go to B1LS, okay, so maybe I just missed the, uh, the L in there. I'm just gonna double check. Yeah, so I guess I missed that. So let's put the little L in there. Okay, and let's see if that fixes that problem. Hold on here. B1LS, B2S. Okay, well, sure. Whatever it wants, right? Uh, I just wanted to be cost effective. So, I mean, you might have to look this up because, you know, it might be the future and they've changed change them here. Um, but I remember this being a valid option. Hmm. Okay. Well, it must be my mistake. So I want to just check it one more time. B1 LS. I don't trust it. So I'm going to copy it just in case it's a capital I. And so what we'll do is try this again. And maybe we'll have better luck this time. And actually, just to save myself some time, I'm gonna just do auto approve. Okay, and I'll see you here in a bit, all right? Okay, so after um, a little bit of waiting there, it looks like it deployed successfully. So we're gonna go over back to our virtual machines here and give it a refresh. And there it is. So uh, yeah, it wasn't too difficult to get that working. Um, but yeah, hopefully you can just see that when you want to figure out uh, these providers here, all you have to do again is go to here and go to the documentation, go to the first section, and that's where the authentication always is. And that's the hardest part, honestly, is just getting beyond that part. But you are gonna find different challenges locally and also with the um, Terraform Cloud because the configuration is different. So let's move on to a, um, another provider. All right, so I actually forgot to uh, destroy the resources here. So I just kind of cycled back here. Uh, I was actually in my GCP one here a moment ago, but I just wanna make sure that uh, you've destroyed your uh, resources there as well. So just type in Terraform uh, destroy. Okay. All right, and just type in yes. and you're all good to go.